Rise and shout. We're two hours away from the kickoff of BYU football. Inside 10, 5, he's going in. Touchdown. Gunner Romney from 45 yards out. This is Cougar Pregame Live, brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Cougar Pregame Live is also brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. And by Kingarf, Honda, Nissan, and Volkswagen in Orem. To get you ready for today's action, let's join the host of Cougar Pregame Live, Jason Shepard. Good evening and happy Halloween, BYU fans. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America Credit Union. Tonight, the 11th ranked and still undefeated BYU Cougars facing the 2-4 and four Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. My name is Jason Shepard. Happy to be with you. I am in our BYU Radio studios in beautiful Provo, Utah. Joining me from Lavelle Edwards Stadium is radio analyst and former BYU quarterback, Riley Nelson, Riley, we got a lot to uh, lot to handle over the next couple of hours. Not only are we getting ready for a football game, it's Halloween and everything that comes with that. Plus, we get to turn our clocks back an hour tonight. There's a lot on our plate tonight. Yeah, and uh, the Mother Nature has blessed us with about 60 degrees yeah. here at kickoff on October 31st of, of picturesque fall day here in Provo extremely blessed despite the full plate absolutely and and this is the same scenario that we've had for most of the season Cougars heavy favorites against a team that they should beat handily and honestly has as has been evident each week the Cougar team has done a great job of focusing on the task at hand most definitely they have, and tonight's a real important tune-up game. Obviously, you don't, you never want to look ahead, but it's human nature, and we as the fans and media can definitely look ahead. Six days from now on Friday night is really the showdown of the season, so you want to be, come in locked in, focused, execute, get better tonight, and, and prepare for that trip up north to Boise. Absolutely. I'm actually watching Boise's game uh, on the road at Air Force. Uh, Air Force has the ball, Boise with a lead of 28-17. Uh, but even without Hank Bachmeyer, uh, Jack Sears, the transfer from USC, has looked phenomenal. But we will get to that next week. That's not, uh, that's not what we're going to worry about tonight. Tonight, we're going to focus on the Cougars and the Hilltoppers, so let's get to the things that you need to know. Number one, BYU, as I mentioned, ranked 11th and the first 6-0 start since back in 2008 and Riley the Cougars keep climbing let's also not forget that the most recent AP poll finally has teams from the Big Ten that have actually played a game so the fact that BYU keeps climbing is a really great sign of the Cougars legitimacy in the eyes of the voters now obviously the Pac-12 still hasn't uh, jumped into the fray as of yet but you're starting to get more and more teams, and obviously as we near November, you would certainly expect teams to be playing, uh, but that certainly adds to BYU's legitimacy in the eyes of the voters. And just in case you were wondering what BYU's schedule was the last time that they were 6-0 and back in 2008, these are the first six games that BYU won. They won uh, versus Northern Iowa. Then they won at Washington, and as you'll remember, that is the, uh, the blocked uh, extra point from Jan Jorgensen. That, uh, that sealed the deal for BYU. Then you had the 59 to nothing uh, domination of the UCLA Bruins. You defeated Wyoming. You had a win at Utah State and then New Mexico. So those were the teams that BYU beat the last time they were 6-0 and back in 2008. Yeah, you mentioned that the Big Ten teams that are now re- put in the rankings. Michigan was right around BYU there behind them at 13. They lost, so it's good when a big brand like that uh, which can, which voters kind of just mindlessly like to vote higher than maybe they deserve. So it's good that they took an L. And then a team right in front in the Big 12, obviously, who was 5-0, and is now 5-1, and was Oklahoma State. They just lost in overtime to Texas. Yep. So some other teams are helping BYU. And it's, it's important because we all know the difficulties around this BYU schedule, um, and they – they can't control you know that but it's important that they continue to take care of business but they are going to need a little bit of help from their friends around them with some timely losses uh, to maintain this high ranking as other teams continue to uh, 
join the fray, mostly the Pac-12, and then as they have a full November slate, and, and as we know, BYU has a little bit has a couple open weeks in there. Absolutely. Let's get to know tonight's opponent, number two, Western Kentucky. As I mentioned, coming in with a record of two and four. This is the first ever meeting, and this is actually the Hilltoppers' first ever game in the state of Utah. I read in their game notes this is also the fourth furthest game they've ever played away from Bowling Green, Kentucky, which is where they're from. The nickname Hilltoppers, in case you were wondering, is a reference to the campus being set on a hill. It's as simple as that. The campus was on a hill, They were, and therefore they're called the Hilltoppers. Uh, Western Kentucky coming off of a win over Chattanooga, which snapped a two-game losing streak. Uh, Western Kentucky's offense it's, it's not very good, and let's just be honest about that. They average about 18 points per game and 277 yards per game. That's it offensively. The defense right now giving up 28 points per game and 370 yards per game. They've used two quarterbacks, uh, Tyrell Pigram and then Car- uh, Caveras Thomas. Both are dinged, but uh, Pigram is the likely starter tonight. Uh, when we talk with their play-by-play man, we'll see if there's any update on the quarterback situation uh, but this is a team, at least uh, from an offensive standpoint, that this season has really struggled. Yeah, and these, uh, there's, and they're still searching, right? Here, the, here they sit, six games into the season, playing their seventh game, and they're still searching for answers. There, there's a little bit of a, an ebb of talent. They just don't, they just don't have the guys, and they're having, and the guys that they do have are having trouble, you know, running the scheme. And the defense play, they play decent with decent effort, and they're they're better than the offense. But when you don't get the help of, you know, an offense staying out on the field and answering, you know, if you give up a score, they can come back and answer a score. And so it's eventually kind of the defense holds on for two to three quarters and then you know and then it eventually it slowly slips out of their hands so they're they're suffering answers and I, and I don't think they're going to find the answers tonight uh here in Provo uh there's two approaches that you can take to this if you're BYU one is come out and, and kind of treat this like a 100 or 200 meter race and just sprint and let let your guys sprint for two full quarters go all out trying you know accrue 35 42 49 points in the first half and with the plan being that you know your starters are going to rest at halftime the other one is uh and Kalani mentioned this in the post game last that BYU has not been able to play and I think I saw on Twitter Zach set out I think four or five of the of the fourth quarters I think four yeah. fourth quarters completely and he's been taken out of every game except the Houston game so uh the other one is to take this more like an 800 meter race to where you kind of pace yourself through the first lap you sprint through the second and then you're, you're planning to get your guys out you know in the third of the fourth quarter I, I, I either way works right one with a short week you think oh let's play the two and, and get that rest and recovery started the other one is no we need our guys to be able to it's not a physical thing it's a mental thing staying focused for four quarters in college football games today uh, in a or in today's age last about three and a half hours so it's a practice to keep that focus and then we'll see what the Cougars do here tonight Riley think about that 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 stat that you mentioned in terms of the four fourth quarters in a season where BYU currently is ranked 11th you have a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate in Zach Wilson who's put up unbelievable numbers you were undefeated at six and zero. Oh. And the quarterback has essentially sat out the equivalent of a an entire game. That is insane, Riley. Yeah, and if whenever somebody – because BYU – a lot of the other people in the Heisman race or just when you're talking about BYU and their numbers, numbers, people say they're inflated. Well, they're not really because most everybody now has played, you know, three, four, five games, and that's really all the BYU starters have played, and, and they still have gone toe-to-toe with every other program out there, again, garnering and earning all of – all of the uh, media attention and, t- and talk about them. All right, finally, with tonight being Halloween, I thought I would uh, bring in a little Halloween-related question, and I'm going to ask everybody. I'm going to start with you, Riley. I'll give my answer, and then obviously when we have Greg and then Mitch a little bit later on in pregame, we'll ask them this question too. Uh, but with tonight being Halloween, here's our question of the night. What is your go-to Halloween candy? I'll start this off. I, if, if it's in there, it's a Snickers for me. I love the Snickers, so if it's there, that's my go-to. So, Riley, what is your go-to Halloween candy? So, I love Snickers as well, but I eat those year-round. Yes. Right? So, I'm thinking something like, what do I not really get? First of all, let me say, because I know there's social media has unfairly (laughs) hopped on this candy, and I have loved it since I was a little kid. I love candy corns. I do, too. Yes. Yes. I don't get the hate. Yes. 
I, it's good to pop a mouthful. You know, it's it, we know it's just like what it gets corn syrup formed into an artificial corn and you eat it. And, <laughs> anyway, so but that's not my favorite. But I just wanted to put that out there that yes. I am firmly in the camp for candy corns, and I don't think all of this mob mentality coming out against them on social media is warranted okay all so, right hashtag camp candy corn for yes us. <laughs> let's get that going no but uh for me dude i pound twixes those little mini oh, yeah. twixes i don't eat a twix like outside of halloween but when it shows up in the bowl at, at halloween time i'm coming after that cookie that caramel covered in chocolate and i eat those one after another as a matter of fact before i left my house now it wasn't a, a candy corn but it was essentially the same thing. It was, it was the 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 little um, pumpkins. Pumpkins, yes. Yep. For whatever reason, there was just one sitting on the uh, kitchen table in my house. I don't know whose it was. I honestly don't know how long it had been there. But I picked it up it and I put matter. it in my mouth, and I had a smile on my face as I left. That's why we had such a great start to this show, <laughs> yes. Chef, and that's why this night's headed in the right direction already. Amen, brother. All right, coming up next, we'll get to know the foe. We'll talk with the Hilltopper play-by-play broadcaster. Randy Lee, this is Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America Credit Union on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Alongside Riley Nelson, here's Jason Shepard. The BYU Cougars, 11th in the country, 6-0, and hosting the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. We'll get to know the folk coming up in just a second. Want to make sure if you were on your way to the game, want to remind you, same thing we remind you last week. Obviously, this is week two of having fans in the stands. Masks are required for tonight's game, so if you're coming to the game, please make sure you're wearing your mask. In fact, you have to wear a mask if you're going to come in. Please sit in your assigned seats. Stay socially distanced. And in terms of bags allowed in the stadium, the only bags that will be allowed are for medical reasons and diaper bags. Beyond that, no bags will be allowed in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. All right, happy to be joined by the play-by-play voice of the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. His name is Randy Lee. Randy, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate it. Delighted to be here, Jason. So here's my first question for you. This is an experienced team. A lot of returners back. Why the 2-4 and four start? How surprising has that been? It's been surprising, but they've lost, every you know, game they've lost has been to a good team. But uh, th- this team has just been uh, stricken with uh, terrible injuries on offense. And their two leading receivers returning from a year ago have both transferred. One decided to transfer in August. He was the fastest receiver on the team. And then a receiver by the name of Pearson, who had 77 catches last year, he got mad after the second game of the year and decided to transfer then. Uh, that with a receiver who had 95 catches last year, who graduated, so almost 200 receptions uh, all of a sudden dissipated from this program, and you're breaking in you know, a, a couple of new quarterbacks. So that probably has a lot to do with it. Uh, the defense is allowed more points than any of us anticipated but really except for the game well they, they, they didn't play well against liberty you know, liberty does not strike fear in anyone's uh, mindset regarding football but uh, it, it's a team that's uh, that's good and we saw them and they went up syracuse and demolished them so they pretty well had the ball run down their throat but with the exception of that game i think the defense has played certainly well enough to win the game so they've had no support uh, the offense has turned it over numerous times providing short fields for the opponents. So uh, just, just offensively, it's, uh, it, it's been a very difficult season. And, uh, you know, injuries certainly have a lot to do with it, but I think some players are also playing probably below the, the level that, uh, uh, that we had anticipated because it's about the same team as a year ago. Randy, you mentioned the two quarterbacks being broken. The lack of uh, all those receptions that went out the window while trying to break in two quarterbacks. Talk to us. We've seen both play and two play in the same game. Talk to us about where that situation. Understand that... Uh, Pigram's coming back, going to be healthy? Uh, he's not healthy. He has a turf toe, but he will start tonight. He came off the bench last week. Uh, he, he came off the bench of the last play of the third quarter and finished the game. Kivaris Thomas, who started, is not even on the trip. He's out with a hip pointer. So we're going with a quarterback who has a, uh, you know, a turf toe, and we'll have a couple of backups who haven't taken a snap this year. So that's the sort of the quarterback situation that we have. Also, a Dayton Wade, who is our leading receiver, he's out too. 
Uh, he has a leg injury. Uh, he had 19 catches in a stretch of three straight games. He didn't play last week. He didn't make the trip here either. So you're down, you know, the three receivers I told you about. And then the re- leading receiver on his team this year, he's out too. And the backup tight end fractured his ankle last week, Dalvin Smith. He has two touchdown catches, so he's out. So that's five receivers gone of what the team had anticipated having. So because of that, there's really no deep threat. The tight end's the biggest deep threat the team has right now. So everyone's able to play in the box and shut down the running game. So let's focus on the other side of the ball then. This Hilltopper defense coming in, giving up about 28 um, and about 377, I guess, uh, total yards. What, what's, what's their mindset going up against a BYU offense that's one of the best in the country and right now just kind of bulldozing teams? What's the mindset going into this game on the defensive side? Well, they, you know, they want to try to get to heat on the, you know, on the quarterback, Wilson, from the outside. D'Angelo Malone uh, broke the school record for sacks a year ago. Uh, you know, he'll be an NFL draft pick, probably mid-rounder. Uh, Jawan Jones is the other defensive end. Now, he hasn't played up to what he played at a year ago, uh, though they will blitz a little bit. Um, you know, the secondary, really, except for the opener against Louisville. Uh, Louisville made a bunch of big plays. They've been good. Um so defensively, the numbers are not, um, when you look at it, thinking, well, they're not that good. Defensively, they've been, they've been pretty good this year. Now, the one thing they don't do, they don't force turnovers. Uh, of all the passes that have been thrown against us, they've only picked off two passes in six games. So, uh, you know, Wilson doesn't throw any picks, and we don't pick off any <laughs> passes. So, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, that bodes for a long night. What are On our they- side of the fence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and by the way, hey, injury bug, and we've dealt with that. It's but you had what twenty, what sixty, forty some guys started last year, different forty nine yeah. or fifty, I think. So yeah, you so had it last year. Yeah, it's it's that bug. I I, I don't know. You're not uh, Kentucky's not super close to, but I'd maybe take a trip down to Louisiana, find a witch doctor who can come <laughs> up and uh, something about. No, but uh, what is what are the Hilltoppers looking to get out of tonight? Are they looking to? compete uh, compete better than they have before? Are they looking just to simply take a step forward? Like you mentioned turnovers. Is the goal, hey, let's just create more turnovers? Is it try and find some kind of rhythm offensively? What's the objective? I think the objective is to come in here and play their very best game. Now, where will that put them? I, 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 you know, I don't think they know. Uh, this team has gone to SEC uh, venues, Big Ten venues, and you know, they've won a couple. They've won at Kentucky. They've won at Arkansas. Last year they beat Arkansas 49-17. to 17. So, you know, they have gone on the road and competed well against, uh, you know, Power 5 schools. They played top 10 teams in the country, um, you know, but they're, you know, they're 30-point underdogs. So they're probably coming here trying to play as well as we possibly can. Let's try to generate some offense, find, find something there, and, uh, you know, see how it goes tonight and then prepare for the last four games of the year. All right, Randy, last question before we let you go. We appreciate you taking a few minutes. Our question of the night, Halloween-related, what is your go-to Halloween candy? When you see that one piece of candy in the Halloween bag, what's, what's the one that gets you every time? I'm a pie guy, and no one has ever put pie into anything that <laughs> carried around trick-or-treating. I wish they would. Uh, that sounds exactly. fantastic. I mean, just a slice of pie would be fine. I, I probably would have to be pressed uh, to go with a Tootsie Roll. Ooh, Ooh. nice. Especially fresh. Nice and chewy. Very yeah, nice. That's tootsie roll, yeah. Uh, that's what we're yeah. giving out at the Shepherd household. At least I can't say we. My wife is giving that out. I'm a, I'm a little preoccupied tonight. But, yeah, we're giving out Tootsie Rolls at the Shepherd house well, just in how, case how anybody. Late is, how late is Mrs. Shepherd staying up? Maybe I can come over and get a Tootsie Roll. Well, you know you what? Um, she's She'll probably be up when I get home, so that'll be around 1. So you're, you're welcome to stop by if there's any well, extra Tootsie Rolls. Get up on your way to let, your let, flight. Let's surprise her. <laughs> I'll be the one to show up at the front door. Very nice. Randy, great stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks for joining us, and have a good call tonight. Appreciate it. We're happy to be here. There we go. Randy Lee, the voice of the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. My one-on-one with Ty and Isaac Rex coming up a little bit later on in Shep Talk. But next, we'll get to Cougar Cuts. You're listening to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America Credit Union on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Jason Shepard and Riley Nelson for more Cougar pregame live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU and Western Kentucky coming your way. Kickoff expected to be at 8.15 Mountain Time-ish. Not the Mountain Time part is the ish. The 8.15 is the ish part. Jason Shepard, Riley Nelson with you. It is time for Cougar Cuts. 
And we focus a lot, Riley, on how a team handles adversity, but not a lot of time discussing how a team handles success. Head coach Kalani Satake said this BYU team has done a great job at both. We've talked about how our team has handled adversity really well and been able to bounce back. And in agreement with that, I think that uh, our players have handled uh, success really well, too. So uh, the fact that they're staying humble and trying to be as hungry as possible, trying to get better, not uh, settling on on what they've done so far, just looking to get better. I think it's been a good mindset that our players have had and something that our coaches and our leaders have shown from the very beginning. You know, Riley, that's important. I mean, you know, how you handle adversity is obviously a major factor in how you can rebound if, if you're dealing with some things that, you know, some roadblocks in your way. But, you know, a lot of times you don't talk about how you handle the success as well. And, and sometimes that could be just as important. Yeah, and the reality is the principles of dealing with either adversity or, or success are the same. You try and stay level-headed. You focus on things that you can control. Uh, you focus on you try and keep positive and a, and a building mindset while looking for uh, areas where you can improve and get better. When you're dealing with successes, if you're doing that, you're keeping yourself occupied trying to eliminate uh, the distractions uh, that could hamper your success. And in adversity, when you're going through that same process, obviously it's keeping you out of negative thought patterns that you know drag you down into things getting worse. So the fact that this team faced so much adversity last season and even maybe the season before, uh, they've, they know those principles very well, and they've put them into practice here in this season. The offense has been one of the biggest bright spots in a very bright season so far. It's been one of the biggest talking points and one of the biggest reasons why this team is 6-0. and And while Zach Wilson has to shoulder a lot of the responsibility as the quarterback, receiver Neil Pau says that the ultimate success of this offense is a result of the collective. Uh, I know Zach gets a lot of praise, but he, he gets a lot of fault as the QB. Um, I think the receivers and tight ends have to step up to do their jobs uh, with Matt going down and him being pretty much the offense the past couple of years. But I think we also took it personal as a receivers group to, to bring it every day, and we've been able to do just that. Um, so he's putting the ball where it needs to be, but obviously sometimes we're having to make the, the tough catches and stuff, and we've been able to come down with a lot of those. Um, so it's just a collective group effort. It's just awesome to see. And it has been awesome to see. And I think last week's game with 14 players catching the ball and the ball being spread around, I think what Neil's talking about is with this much talent on the team, everybody has an opportunity to feel a part of things and also be productive. Yeah, and he's exactly right. The quarterback is so unique in sports in that they are the – it's such a chicken or the egg scenario in that they are the biggest benefactor of the success and the high level of execution of the players around them. But also, if they're playing at a high level, it makes everything work, right? So um, that's been on full display here with this BYU team, Zach's. And, and the nice thing is, is all of the other 10 guys around him have been doing their, their thing, and Zach's been responding right back and doing his, his thing. And it's just been a cycle that keeps feeding itself and building for more and more success week by week with this team. I have an important traffic update that we want to make sure everybody is aware of, and this is in preparation for later on tonight, beginning at 9 p.m. I feel like I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. This is very cool for me. Uh, whether you are going to be leaving Lavelle Edwards Stadium and heading home, heading north, uh, back up to Salt Lake County, or if you are in Salt Lake County tonight, you're certainly going to want to pay attention to this. You can expect heavy delays on northbound I-15 tonight in Sandy between 114th South and 9400 South. As I mentioned, uh, the freeway is going to be reduced to two lanes starting tonight at 9 p.m., and that is going to last through Monday at 5 a.m. So please make sure to avoid the area or plan for extra time if you will be traveling through that area tonight or throughout the weekend until Monday at 5 a.m. Coming up next, I go one-on-one with Isaac Rex in Shep Talk. More Cougar pregame live presented by Mountain America Credit Union after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to Cougar pregame live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to your host, Jason Shepard. 11th ranked BYU hosting the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Happy Halloween, Cougar fans. 
Tonight's Shep Talk is with freshman tight end Isaac Rex. Rex was thrust into a bigger role once Matt Bushman's season was over. And Rex, obviously the son of former BYU tight end Byron Rex, he has 175 yards receiving and three touchdowns, including two last week. I asked Isaac how he would evaluate his own play through six games. I feel like I've been just trying to constantly improve, especially work on my blocking and and then the pass game will come with it. But I've just been trying to do what's ever best for the team. Um, when Matt went down, it was it was a collective effort by everyone to, you know, kind of pick up the, his load. He did so much for the team. And so I feel like uh, I've just been trying to improve every week. I feel like that's all I can do. But as I've been trying to improve, I've I've seen the results of it. So it's it's really nice to see. How much contact do you guys have with Matt? Is he still around the program quite a bit? Do you guys still talk to him and keep up with him? Yeah, so the tight ends have like a big group chat and – we have a Snapchat group chat. We we're on TikTok all the time, and we just well, I I text Mac Matt all the time. He's he's like my my role model. So uh, we're always talking, and he's giving me advice on on what to do in certain plays because he definitely knows how how to get it done. And um, he's helping out the whole group, and we just love Matt. He's a great personality, and we just love seeing him around. It's almost scary to even think about how good this offense could be if he was a part of it. I mean, the fact that you guys are doing the numbers you guys are doing now and to think about not having a weapon like that, it's almost crazy to even think about. Seriously, I was telling someone the other day, I was like, man, what if what if we had a three-year starter, 120-something catches, whatever, how many yards he had uh, in this offense, and we're what – we're close to the number one offense in the nation, man, that would have been absolutely OP. That would have been overpowered. So uh, Matt, I'm sure he would love to be part of this offense, but he's doing his part right now by by helping the young guys and he supports us and loves us and we love him too. And uh, we'll do anything for Matt. So let's stay on that same line of thinking in terms of one of college football's best offenses. You're a part of this offense. It's led by a quarterback who's getting Heisman attention right now. What has this year and being a part of this offense meant to you personally? Personally, it's just like we're going down as one of the better offenses in the in BYU history. Um, it's cool. Like all our names will be in the record books at, at BYU for whatever, how many yards we have or uh, how many games we win. And so we just want to keep this thing rolling. We're not done yet. We still have a lot of work to go. And I feel like we can, we definitely want to be a team that BYU fans remember in a positive light. And they want to keep watching playbacks of on old ESPN games, on ESPN Classic. And we want to be that BYU team that, you know, the fans remember, man, like, wow, that 2020 team was so fun to watch. We just want to keep this thing going. How much fun has mom and dad had watching this season, even if it's been from afar? Uh, they're loving it, man. They've been BYU fans for I don't know how long. They met at BYU. I've been raised a BYU fan, brainwashed my whole life. They're loving this season, and they just want everyone to do well and see us keep going and try to make it to a, a huge bowl game or the national championship, you know? I know you get asked a lot about your dad, and obviously he's a prominent figure in BYU's history. How much has it helped you through your football career to be able to have somebody who's experienced what you're experienced to lean on? I think it's really helped. Uh, this team is filled with like former alumni children. We got it's crazy when you think about we, how many there are. There's so many. I like Carter. Even in the tight end room alone, it we got Hank Tuipolotu, Carter Wheat. We have uh, Bentley Hanshaw. Matt's uncle played at BYU. Mason has an uncle that played at BYU. We have so many like alumni, and it's so crazy to see, man. Uh, all our dads just kind of raised us to grow up BYU fans and and now we want to do what they did back in the day so it's cool to see all the former alumni and and I'm sure our dads are on top of the world right now watching us play and and seeing us succeed like they did certainly paying off to say the least do seem to be able to focus on the task at hand and not let the outside stuff get to you and I mean the outside stuff both positive and negative how big of a deal has that been especially in games like you're going to have this week against Western Kentucky when you're such a heavy favorite, to just put it all out and go focus on the task. I'm trying to stay off social media. I feel like a lot of guys are too. We're just, we're all focused on, you know, one week at a time, one play at a time. Practices are, they're not like walkthroughs, kickthroughs. We're still going against the defense live. Well, not live, but like one-on-ones and stuff. And we just want to keep getting better every week. And we don't want to be, um, a team that just plateaus. We we feel like we still have a lot of ways to go. We don't feel like we've played a perfect game even to this point. We can just keep uh, getting better and 
keep trying to work as an offense. So I feel like the sky's the limit for us and we have so much talent around that we could just keep getting better every, every week. Well, certainly been a fun team to watch. I know fans just, I mean, they're, they're just eating this season up. Isaac, before we get to the, and and I wrap things up with the final four, these are personality questions, but I'm going to add an additional question to the mix because it's Halloween. I'm asking everybody that is on Cougar pregame live, our question of the night. And that is, what is your go-to Halloween candy? Go-to Halloween candy, 100 grand bar. 100 grand bar, it's so underrated, I think. It's got caramel, crisp, yes. uh, it's got chocolate in between. And I think 100 grand bar is the, the best uh, chocolate bar out there. Hands down. Very nice because it's like a it's like a it's like a fat crunch bar with caramel. Yes, inside. yes, exactly. And I love crunch bars also, but when you add the caramel with the hundred gram bar, it's it's unstoppable. So yeah, it's next level stuff. Yes. Okay, that's very Here. good. All right, now we're going to get to the actual final four personality questions. Okay. All right, if you could have a Zoom conversation with anyone, who would it be? Do they have to be alive? No, and they don't even have to be real. I would probably have a zoom conversation with probably abraham lincoln or ronald reagan my two favorite presidents very nice ronald reagan is also my favorite president very nice okay uh what is your cheat day snack meal or dessert um yogurt land i love frozen yogurt and then i get go-to flavor uh, go-to flavor is um milk chocolate and then the milk chocolate with cookie dough and whipped cream. And the whipped cream is nice because it doesn't weigh anything. So you could put as much on top and then <laughs> it doesn't even cost like that much more. It's like a free topping. Literally, it's like a free topping. And then I get that every time and some fudge on top. So the Yogurt Land is my favorite place and I will eat that all day. What's the sport you would play if you didn't play football? Basketball. I love basketball. That's uh, one of my favorite sports. I played in high school. I would love to play basketball. If not basketball, um volleyball beach volleyball it was getting ripped and oh, yeah. man and uh girls love you when you play beach volleyball so <laughs> nothing wrong with that either all right isaac last question what makes the 2020 byu football team special you know what there's a lot of different ways i could answer this but i feel like just how much fun we're having uh, you could tell on the sidelines that we're excited we're dancing we want to be here we're playing and we just love byu and uh love the cougars and so we'll do anything for uh for this team. And so I feel like we're having so much fun. We love uh, our fans and we want to do what's ever best for them. So we're going to keep having fun and keep this thing going. Isaac, great stuff. You are the man. Appreciate you taking a few minutes. It's been fun to to watch your season so far and certainly uh, looking for more great things as the season goes on. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, Jason. That was Isaac Rex, and I I have made a huge mistake. Uh, All of the uh, talk about food is just making me hungry for all the things we're talking about. All of the candy that's been mentioned, I'm now wanting all of it. So uh, this may have backfired on me by talking about our go-to Halloween candy. Appreciate Isaac Rex uh, taking a few minutes. He was great, and uh, he's having a fantastic season. Mentioned with the three touchdowns, two last week. He is uh, certainly on his way to having a stellar career in Provo. Coming up next, it's the QB read with Riley. You're not going to want to miss this one. Riley, Riley uh, let's just say there may be puns involved in this one that's all i'm gonna say you're gonna have to tune in when we come back you're tuned into cougar pregame live presented by mountain america credit union on the new skin byu sports network this is cougar pregame live on the new skin byu sports network Alongside Riley Nelson, here's Jason Shepard. Before we get to our QB read with Riley, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar pregame live. It's presented by Mountain America Credit Union. Reward yourself with my style checking from Mountain America. You can earn points towards travel, gift cards, events, and more. Details can be found at macu.com slash my style. Membership is required based on eligibility. All right, the time has come. It's time for our weekly QB read with Riley. Riley, you dog. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's a new, it's worth. It's a new addition. <laughs> 
do the QB read with Riley. Can we just hit that one more time? Can we hit that? Riley, you dog. <laughs> I had totally forgot about that old BYU TV commercial from what, 2012? 10. 2010. Or 11, 2011. 2011, yep. where you're going around and, and you're throwing passes to people who have no clue what's going It's It's a funny commercial. Uh, Jerem Jordan, at Jerem Jordan, tweeted out the old commercial this week, and I totally forgot about Riley U. Dog. Uh, and so that is now going to become a permanent fixture uh, as part of the QB read with Riley. It's essentially part of the Open now. So, everyone, you're welcome. It's a great part of BYU football history, really. I th- it'll go down there in the annals with Ty Detmers, Heisman, and you know all the college football. Very America. much so. But, hey, let's get into the QB read this week, Halloween edition. So, look, in the past, I kind of go, like, last week was really academic, and I get really analytical. We're going to have a little bit of fun. All right, so let me start off by saying my in-laws, one of their favorite pastimes is puns. Like, we get together in family, you know, family trips, or sometimes it'll just break out in the family text thread. Where the, and they think it is just hilarious. I'm not very good at them, so I, I don't really participate. But uh, with that backdrop, I figured I'd take a shot at some of the names on the roster. And by the way, credit my in-laws. They contributed a couple of these. The better ones, I'll take the blame for some of the worst ones. All right? Let's kick it off. And, Shep, I kind of want your reaction on okay. some of okay. these. I, right, yes. so, so get in. Okay. Uh, we'll start off with the specialists. This was actually the first one I thought of, even without looking at the roster. Our punter, Ryan Shrieko. <laughs> Ryan okay. Shreve. It's very nice. Look, oh. look. you think you're not good at coming up with these? I, in a million years, would have never thought of Ryan Shrieko. That's awesome. So, uh, next, let's move to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, the tight ends were my most fruitful group, but I do have a couple of wide, uh, wide receivers that I want to get out before we get into the tight ends. Axe Milne. Axe. It, it was right Milne. there. It's right yeah, in. I mean, yes, just it's perfect. right there for the takes. It's beautiful. Here, th- this one's a little bit more creative, I, I thought, for those. And, and it might be a generational one. I don't know if the younger kids know, uh, but Braden Casper. Not Cosper, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Braden Casper the Friendly Ghost. I, I hope people remember Casper the Friendly Ghost. We're not now, that old. Yeah. Uh, he's getting a little bit of play. He's got a Geico commercial. He's got a Geico this, commercial, this yes. Season. Um, all right, there's a, there's three of these. Uh, so I'll start off with the first one as we get into the tight ends because I went three for three on the tight ends. But some of them, you need no help. This one might need a little bit more explanation than we need. But Mason Wake, is it is it common knowledge that a wake is a funeral? Um, is, I, 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 th- I think, yes, I, I would think that it is, yes. So so there you go. No, no change needed for Mason, so thank you to him and his ancestors for that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, here's the other one, Carter Trick or Treat. Carter Ooh. Wheat, Carter mm. Tree. I like it. Uh, and then Isaac Hex. <laughs> there you it's go. very timely as well, seeing yes. as how he was the, the, the Shep Talk he this week. He was the Shep Talk today. All right, running back. I, this is I my favorite. One. This one's my favorite. Couldn't think of one for Lopini, so with Tyler All Fear. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. That That's, one might be evergreen because he strikes fear into the yes, heart of opposing that defenses. Is, I think that that is certainly a top two. Right now it's in the lead for my favorite. Okay, great. QBs, uh, this one, uh, we wish him a speedy recovery. He's been dealing with injuries. He hasn't even made an appearance yet for us. But Scarin Hall, nice. Jaron Scarin Hall, and then, of course, our fearless leader, Zachula <laughs> Wilson. Very, Zachula Very Wilson. nice. Oh, this is uh, great. O-line, Frady Christensen. That one's not really like Halloween. I don't know. But scared Frady? Yeah, yeah Frady, Frady cat, You're a Frady you cat, know. which means you're scared, and you get scared at Halloween. It's it's a perfect tie-in. Moving to the outside to the tackle, Blake Screamland okay. rather than Freeland. Okay. I had to add a little letter in there. It wasn't, a, it wasn't as pure. Okay, kicking it over to the defensive side of the ball, Max Booley. That was my favorite. <laughs> that was the first one I came up with, and that was another one I didn't even have to look at the roster. It was right there for the taking. Um, okay, this one I apologize for the ing- I apologize to the engineers that I didn't do a sound check on this one. But Chaz, ah, you, <laughs> Chaz, ah, you. It's so very clever. It's, yeah, get really scary in the backfield. Obviously, another guy that's been hurt. Another one that. Uh, that it just was right there for the it's, taking. It's right no here. change needed. Tyler Batty. Yes. Right? Just it's, it's there. That's Halloween's. And uh, so thank you, Tyler, to, to him. And then this one is our only double double pun, our only double change of the night. Hack Saw for Zach Daw. It took me, honestly, it took me a minute to realize what you were saying there. 
Yeah, because you changed both. Yeah. The, hack, hack, I mean, the two were a hacksaw with a murder, you know, using that as his <laughs> weapon. Change both the names. Some of these you take a little bit of a stretch. Here's another one. A little bit. I had to get creative with this one. Uh, uh, but insane Anderson. Insane. Insane. Let's right. move on from that one. Not my favorite, <laughs> but uh, got it in the mix. Oh, on the defensive side of the ball, this is uh, our our colleague and compatriot Greg Rubel's um, addition, which I liked. It's uh, again, it, it throws back to maybe a, a little bit of a different. A generation, but the cre- it was not lacking in creativity. Hayden, Knight of the Living Deadston. <laughs> Hayden, okay. Knight of the Living Deadston. Okay, so, instead of Hayden Livingston. Yep. Yes, yeah, see, it's it works on a lot of different levels. I like it. Yep, so last one of the coaches. We'll start off with the one that needed no change, and uh, this uh, an ode to Chris Boomer Berman of yes. ESPN. Yes. Jeff Grimes. <laughs> It was right there for the taking. It's a great la- last name that, by the way, fits his personality and his whole persona. And then uh, uh, the fearless leader of the whole program before I cap it off with my favorite. So second to last, Kill Ani Sitake. <laughs> Kill Ani. You know, that's uh, that might even be the correct pronunciation. We just go over it too fast, yeah. but it works for Halloween. And then my personal favorite and the last one I'll give to all you faithful listeners who have put up with my nonsense for the last about four and a half, five minutes, Ed, Silence of the Lamb. <laughs> Fair. See, that is the ultimate Chris Berman right there. I can imagine, you know, Ed scoring a touchdown or getting a big, uh, you know, fourth down stop. And him dropping the Ed, Silence Ed of the Lamb with a big stop. Silence of the Lamb. Very nice. Very creative. And I am not smart enough to come up with any of those. Even the ones that you don't need to change. I would probably like, I would be like, look at Tyler Batty and it would not even register with me. Hey, so let me throw it out there. Submit yours to Shep or mine. I talked with Jason uh, about this in the break. If it's good enough, one of his scoreboard updates throughout the broadcast, he may he may drop it. Only if it's good enough. The bar is going to, as you can see, I set the bar extremely high. Yes. So, uh, But tweet at us. Give us your Halloween puns off the BYU lost, roster and BYU staff. Speaking of setting the bar high, we've got Greg Rubel coming up next. We will visit with the boys when we return to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America Credit Union on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Jason Shepard and Riley Nelson for more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU, the 11th ranked team in the country, hosting the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. We'll have the game for you tonight, coming up at about 8.15 Mountain Time kickoff, probably sliding uh, a little bit. Joining us now is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. It's our visit with the voice. Happy Halloween, Greg. Happy Halloween to you and all. Yes. um, I did see your Booth Bits tweets. Love the Booth Bits, by the way. They're made with real bits of Booth. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 60% of the time, they're <laughs> accurate every time. Yes, exactly. And uh, my first question was going to be about uh, Gunnar Romney and James Empey. And in Booth Bits, you tweeted out a little while ago that it looks like both of those players are going to be back. Yeah, both warmed up in the initial warm-ups, and both were practicing this week with the ones. And so, yeah, uh, the, 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 the theory here is that if they're cleared, they should play. Not that they should rest for the next game, but if they're good to go, play them. If they're not ready, well, then, yeah, rest will be good, and, 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 and the next game they're able to play is a week from last night. But if you're cleared and you're practicing, uh, the belief is there's no sense in just keeping you on the shelf if you're good to go, and they're both good to go and both want to play, both like to play, both want to be in the lineup. And so uh, the good news is they've been active this week and have had no setbacks, and so unless something changes here in the next hour, uh, both should be expected uh, to, to get in the lineup tonight. Greg, how has uh, – obviously no uh, – and I – you know, sometimes they can keep it under under wraps, but these always seem to leak out in the media. But it seems at BYU, how have they done so well? Obviously, Trevor Lawrence couldn't play today for Clemson. Uh, Hank Bachmeyer for Boise, scratch for COVID. How have these guys been able to avoid any meaningful scratches uh, since, obviously, that Army game um, here in the program? Well, you know, I, I think, you know, we're uh, unlike some other programs, I, I don't know that we're getting, you know, weekly – COVID updates publicly. So, um, you know, if, if players, um, 
you know, players could be in those situations. We're simply not aware of it. Um, but clearly, if, if somebody primary doesn't show up, it, it becomes a talking point, and they have been able to avoid those primary absences for the most part. Um, and so, you know, kudos to the program and every individual player for, uh, you know, doing what's needed. But I, I think other programs are a little more... Um, a little more public with how they handle that, and, and I, I think BYU'd be, be considered among the teams that are, um, you know, if someone's noticeably absent, it can be brought up. But they've had they've been able to manage to avoid the notice, noticeable absences so far. Greg, uh, there's been a lot of reasons why this team has been so dominant this year, but I, I wanted to tap into something that you are great at. You have an unbelievable database. Of, of stats that this team puts up year after year, decade after decade, and, and what, they, what they've accomplished. So what's the one stat? If somebody said to you, explain to me why this BYU team is so dominant, what's the one stat you would use to display that? There are a lot of things to look at right now, but I'm, I'm going to go to Zach Wilson, and I'm going to go to the, his pass efficiency numbers. And uh, they're, you know, this year... They're off the charts. Uh, Zach is is at two ten point four in pass efficiency through six games. Last year he ended the year at one thirty point eight. He's a full eighty points better than last year's season ending number in pass efficiency. That is a massive number. Look at his games last year. First of all, understand that he's been over one seventy five in five in 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 in, in uh, every game and over two hundred in five of the six games. Okay, so his low number is 177 this year. He didn't get he got he got to that number one time all of last year was at UMass, one of the worst defensive teams in college football history. But these were his other numbers. Let's take away the UMass game for a second. Okay, these are last year's pass efficiency numbers, and I'll round them to the nearest number: 105, 144, 141, 120, 140, 127, the 274 against UMass, then 101 and 108 to end the season. Ends up at a 130, 131 for the year. That's last year. And that's last year, Zach Wilson playing with not great health. Bad shoulder to start the year, thumb injury middle of the year, comes back never quite himself, can't make every throw, just didn't look the same. Those were his pass efficiency numbers last year. Now to this year, full season of rehab, full season of training, off season of rehab, off season of training, working on his craft, and here's what you get. 206, 232, 223. 177 is the low, 205 and 225. Those were his pass efficiency numbers in six games this year. It's more than just one guy and more than just one stat. But, Jason, you asked me to distill it down to the one stat, the one number, and I think it's Zach Wilson, his pass efficiency, the team's pass efficiency. The numbers are really meaningful, and you simply don't lose with those numbers. And last year was nothing like what we're seeing right now. Okay, Greg, now for the most important question of the night, and it's really going to determine the outcome of this game. Very Uh, true. Your answer to this is your go-to Halloween candy. What one can you not refrain from eating? Okay, now this is not going to be a popular answer. I I acknowledge that going in. Some will question my sanity, (laughs) if not my dietary choices. But uh, Is it mounds? No. Don't tell me it's bitter honey. Nothing wrong with those. And I like almond joy as well. No, it's not going to be that. Oh, it's my, it's my least favorite candy. That's disgusting. It uh, is. <laughs> no, it's the it's the Tootsie Fruit Chews. Not the Tootsie Roll, yeah. the Tootsie Fruit Chews. Okay. You cannot go wrong with those. Yeah. Those, are, you know, the, the, those tiny, colorful little nuggets <laughs> you find uh, at the bottom of every bag, don't just overlook them. Those are tasty morsels. And uh, I, I'm telling you right now, Tootsie Fruit Chews, give me a bag of those. I'm, you, I'm good for you hours. You said it, Greg, and you said tiny. The only problem with those is can you get enough to get your Make fill? It it always, while, yeah. And they yeah. are so good, it always leaves you wanting yeah. more. No, but you know, they, 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 they get passed over a lot, and I just I, I cherry-pick those bad boys every time I get into a bucket. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand why you would pass those over because those are legit. They Absol- are delicious. Okay, so yeah. now, okay, very – very quick bonus question. So earlier we found out that both Riley and I are are hashtag Team Candy Corn. Where do you fall on the candy corn? Oh, big fan. Uh, oh, fact, all three well, of us. Last night uh, we had a, a Halloween uh, get together. It was uh, within the appropriate legal limits, by the way. <laughs> uh, we were masked up, uh, and and one of the prizes in, uh, in in the many games we had going on was a huge container of candy corn from the Guess the Number of Candy Corns contest, mm. which I, by the way. <sighs> I came in third. I had I, I, I overshot by a hundred. I knew I was a hundred heavy. I should have backed off, and I didn't, and it cost me. Uh, I did not win the candy corn. My son finished second, though, 
And as a consolation, the winner did pour out a good portion of the candy corn into plastic bags for us to take home. So we did not leave empty-handed, and we've been eating candy corn at the house today uh, pretty much nonstop. Oh, that is fantastic. All, th- all right, basically now we just need Mitch to be pro, and we're going to talk with him in a second. He's got to be pro candy corn, and then the entire broadcast team is pro candy corn, and I love it. And I'm one of those guys, Jason, that thinks that candy corn is appropriate in May. Agreed. Yes. It's delicious. So, it is let's delicious. get it rolling for Easter. Yes. Start at April. Let's make it an evergreen, right? Hey, next time we get together as an entire group, whenever that will be, we need to have whatever get together with candy corn. It's going to happen. By the way, Shep, the hashtag, because we're such fans of alliteration here, is Camp Candy Corn. Camp Candy Corn. That, that's what you said initially. That that's true. the one I like. That's the movement we're starting okay, all right. on, Camp on the Candy socials. Corn. All right, guys, yeah. great stuff. Greg, thank you as always. Riley, thank you. We'll hear both of you coming up in about a half an hour. Thanks, Chef. There we go. I oh, love it that the, that the guys that I'm hanging out with are all pro, or excuse me, hashtag Camp Candy Corn. All right, we're going to talk with Mitchell Jurgens, and we're going to start things off with that question. we got to find that out right off the top. We'll have more of Cougar Pregame Live. Mitchell Jurgens will join us next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to your host, Jason Shepard. BYU Cougars getting ready to face the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Once again, a reminder, if you're going to the game tonight, masks are required. If you don't have a mask, you can't get in. So make sure you bring your mask for tonight's game. If you're one of the 6,000 or so that will be in attendance, please make sure you stay in your assigned seats. Make sure you're socially distanced and in terms of bags, The only bags allowed, diaper bags and bags for medical reasons. Beyond that, no bags will be allowed inside Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And by the way, Grant Lundberg on Twitter, your tweet of Bitto Honey rules, you're not bringing that into my pregame show, okay? Bitto Honey is disgusting, and I will not stand for anyone that is pro Bitto Honey, okay? We're going to get that straight right now. Joining me now, and hopefully he's not pro Bitto Honey, uh, his name is Mitchell Juergens. He's joining me from Lavelle Edwards Stadium. All right, first a uh, couple questions before we get to the football. Bit of honey, your thoughts? Um, I'm not going to lie. I don't think I've ever had one. Okay, it's fine. I'm going to count that as that you don't like it. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's perfect. All right, candy corn. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on you, but you may not be allowed to do sidelines anymore if you're the dissenting vote in the candy corn. You know, Jason, I was prepped before <laughs> I came on here, um, but I'm going to stand my ground. Oh, and no! I, I cannot do candy corn. Oh, no, candy. So two, the two candies, honestly, I, I I just can't do candy corn and jelly beans. Oh, those two for some reason I just I, I can't do it. And all right, no, you know, no one's gonna convin- gonna convince me to to be a candy corn or jelly bean person. I'm okay, just, you know, Jason, I'm just not that person. That's fine. You know what? Because I like you so much, I'm gonna let it slide. <laughs> in my mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume you said that you were pro. So in my mind you're pro, and then you can just have your own opinion that you don't like them. That's fine. Uh, hey, I, I'm I'm good to stand on even ground there. All right, like sounds it. good. All right, well let's actually get to the football stuff, which is what people are tuning in for. Uh, BYU had never scored 40 plus points in five of its first six games until this season. What's been the biggest reason for this type of offensive dominance? I mean, is it Zach? Is it play calling opponents? What is it? Yeah, you know, when I look at this, obviously there's going to be a lot of things. Um, the biggest reason, and, and you have to say, I and mean, you can't ignore the performance that Zach Wilson is putting together. Um, you know, his play has been nothing short of amazing, uh, amazing nearing perfection uh, when it comes to, you know, when you look at a pass efficiency rating in, in five of those six games being over 200. It's just what he's doing is it's just incredible. Um, we're we're truly witnessing something really special this crazy 2020 season, and he is uh, I mean not the factor right, but right. he is a, a large part of what you know we've seen the BYU dominance or the offense do from a domination standpoint. Um, but I, I do I, I do want to touch on just a few other people that you know when you look at the overall perspective of how they've been able to do this, um, you can't ignore it right. Tyler Algier. Um, what a surprise he's been at running back. Uh, I mean, what he's been able to do, and Lopini has been has been great as well. They've been dominant in the backfield, but Tyler, he came in. That guy is a straight-up beast. 
loves contact, and I mean the the fire that he brings to the offense is just incredible. Um, you go to the offensive line, and this is I mean this is one of the best offensive lines that we've seen in such a long time. Brady Christensen, right, ranked the number one offensive tackle um, in NCAA football right now. I mean he, he, what what they've been able to do um, to protect Zach, to give him lanes, to provide the running backs running lanes. I mean it's uh, they've been amazing, and then. Overall receiving targets, and I, I don't know if you know, um, I, I didn't look this up before, I probably should have, how many drops do receivers, tight ends have this year? I mean, they, they really don't have many at all. I, I mean, I can remember just a, a few in six games, and when you can provide that much power from you know offensive standpoint, you're going to be dominant, and so collectively as a group, they've just been so impressive. It seemed like every offensive player caught a pass or carried the ball last week. When the ball is being spread around like that is, what type of pressure does that put on opposing defense? They got to be pulling their hair out trying to figure out who they're supposed to uh, who they're supposed to follow. Oh yeah, I mean it, it does. It adds a great deal of pressure there. Um, you know, you go back to the Houston game, and if I'm an opponent, I'm coming away from that game and completely keying in on two people: Zach Wilson and Dax Milne. Um, Texas State, I mean, if, if I'm an opponent, you come into the game, you're like, we stop those two people, we stop BYU. Um, but then they come out in Texas State, and they spread the ball around like crazy. And it just, it, it does, it makes you, you know, question, hey, what are we doing? You know, we can't just key in on Dax, we can't just key in on Zach, because there are so many other guys spreading the ball around. Then as a defense, you've got to step back and say, hey, let's just, we got to play BYU as a whole. Then once again, it opens up those one-on-one matchups. Um, and, and, and so just the, the more weapons you have, it's that's a key to a successful offense, and BYU is proving that there's there's so much depth there. And when you make a run like this, you've got to have depth, and BYU is showing that they have it. Okay, so in a game you're favored again by 30, it's, this is a very common theme that we've talked about in these games. You're, you're expected to win by a, a large margin. You should win by a large margin. Um, you have a season-defining game on deck next week at Boise. And by the way, Boise, it is a final. They have beaten Air Force what do you want to see from the Cougars tonight? So just like we saw last week, I, I want to see BYU come out to such an early and demanding lead um, where, you know, in the second half, you can pull your starters out. I think the biggest thing going into Boise State next week, you've got to have your guys healthy. Um, you know, I know we're getting some guys back, um, Empey and, and, and Gunner, um, that we're, we're probably going to see on the field tonight. Um, we, we need those guys healthy. We need everyone healthy that's going to play. And the best way to do that, right, it's simple math. If you're on the field longer, then you're, you're, you're more prone to have an injury, right? The more hits you take, the more hits you give. Um, that, that, I mean, you're, you're just putting yourself in a position to potentially get injured. And if BYU can do what they did last week against Texas State, um, then they, you know, play 30 minutes um, in, in, the first, in the first half, maybe a, maybe a drive or two in the second half. And if you have such a commanding lead, pull those guys out, rest them up. We're on a short week already right. as the game next week is on Friday. Mm-hmm. So that's the biggest thing that I'm seeing. BOU can control that by taking that early demanding lead. All right, question of the night. We've been asking everybody, what's your go-to Halloween candy? We know it's not jelly beans, and we know it's not candy corn. It's not. So um, what, is, what is the go-to <laughs> Halloween candy? So for me, and, and I may get some haters here, um, I know there's, there's always an ongoing debate on Red Vines or Twizzlers. Mm. And, Jason, I am a Twizzlers guy. Okay. That is my candy. Okay. Um, it is, I, I mean, it, it's, it's hands down my favorite. I'm always looking for the Twizzlers. Um, well, what are you? Are you Red Vines or, or Twizzlers? Um, I, I actually love both. I just love licorice. As long as it's not black okay. licorice, I'm, I'm it, fine. Exactly. I, I, okay. Black licorice is gross. Uh, but yeah, as long as I'm fine with either, I would say more times than not, I probably will go the Twizzler route. Good. But I, I will certainly eat a bunch of both. I love them both. Okay. All right. That's well, awesome. Love it. Love, love it, it, Jason. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Have fun uh, during the game tonight. Hey, thanks so much. All right. On the other side, we hear from Western Kentucky head coach Tyson Helton. And yes, I ask him his favorite. Halloween candy. That's next. Cougar pregame live rolls on. It is presented by Mountain America Credit Union, and it is brought to you by the new skin BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to Cougar pregame live on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Now back to your host, 
Jason Shepard. Earlier this week, I talked with the head coach of the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. His name is Tyson Helton. If that name sounds familiar, it's probably because you're a college football fan. Coach Helton is the son of longtime coach Kim Helton and the brother of USC head coach Clay Helton. Tyson is in his second season at Western Kentucky. Here's our conversation. Coach, it's always nice to be coming off a win, as you guys did against Chattanooga. At 2-4, and four, where's your team now versus where you had hoped they would be through six games? Well, obviously the goal is to be like BYU, be undefeated and win them all. Uh, unfortunately, that hasn't been the case for us. You know, we've played some really good football teams in the first half of the season, had a couple of disappointing games where we turned the ball over that took us out of the game. So, you know, we always talk about as a football team, though, it's your full body of work that you do over a football season. So we want to have a strong second half of the season. It starts uh, coming up this week, and uh, hopefully we can get a streak of wins going and feel pretty good about how the season ends for us. I know a lot of coaches, they can understand and deal with struggles through a season as long as they feel the team is giving it their all. Is that the case with your team right now? Are you pleased with the effort you're seeing? Yeah, I've always been pleased with our team. They've always uh, battled hard, competed hard. They play for each other. They believe in each other. You know, they understand what it takes to win. They're a very mature football team. And so, yeah, we've always had that here. That's hard to, to have sometimes, you know, as you, as you know, some teams have it, some teams don't. But the one thing we've always had here is guys that – will fight and battle for each other through the whole game and win, lose, or draw, they're, they're always going to give you their best. Let's talk about your quarterback situation. You've started two different quarterbacks this year, whether it's been Pigram or Thomas. What's your quarterback situation heading into this game? Well, we have we have both uh, available, and um, you know both have gotten a little banged up, and so you know we've played both guys. You know, both both will be available. Um, both guys are very capable of moving the ball and making plays. So, you know, we can play either one of those guys. But hopefully we'll, we'll be healthy in that position where both guys are, are ready to roll and we feel good about both of them. How do you approach facing a team like BYU? And, and let's just focus on the defensive side right now. With what BYU has been able to do, how do you approach trying to counteract that? Well, you know, you just – a bunch of film to watch and and I agree with you they're a very good defense football team but you just try to create uh the schemes and that gives you the best chance for success and you know the key for us is making sure that you know we control the ball don't turn the ball over play good defense you know and offensively at some point in time we've got to get some explosive plays uh so that we can put points on the board and give our ch- ourselves a chance to win and uh They've done a fantastic job in the first half of the season and making it very, very hard on offenses, as you all know. You know, we just got to put together a good game plan and uh, and get out there and execute it. You mentioned turnovers, and that's something that's that's been, I'm sure, more of an issue than you would like. And especially some of those turnovers have led directly to points the opposition's been able to capitalize on. How have you tried to address that aspect, especially when this week, when you look at a BYU offense that's scoring at will? Well, the key to every game is not turning the ball over. As long as you don't turn the ball over, you definitely got a chance to be in the game in the fourth quarter. Most games I've been a part of, if you don't turn it over, you're usually in the game. So that'll be definitely a point of emphasis for us is it's okay to punt football. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, this game is about field position and you need to reserve the right to punt. You know, we feel like our defense does a good job and hopefully our defense can uh, – contain them enough where we can be in the game in the fourth quarter trying to go score to win the game but turnovers will play a huge part in that we, we cannot afford to turn the ball over in this game talking with Tyson Helton head coach of the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky here on Cougar pregame live okay so correct me if I'm wrong I went back and was looking at your coaching trajectory and places you've been and you've actually been at several places that have faced BYU but you were not there when they played the Cougars Correct me if I'm wrong, the, the last time that you faced a BYU team, was it early 2000s when you were with Hawaii? I was, yeah, I was, and uh, that was an experience. Um, if I recall, we were up in the game, we were doing we were doing pretty well, and then all of a sudden a big cold front came through and the clouds turned black and the stadium erupted. Uh, 
uh, it was like a total tide, tidal change. In a matter of minutes, the whole game got out of hand, did a complete 180. So that was my first taste of uh, being at BYU Stadium, and I came away pretty impressed with, with what I saw. I heard you talking to your local media, and you were talking about the fact that, look, there's no pressure on us. For your team, what's the one thing – beyond anything else that you want to see out of your team come Saturday? I, I want to be in the game in the fourth quarter with an opportunity to win the game, really. And that would it wouldn't matter if we were playing BYU or not. That's kind of our motto. We, we always talk about get to the last five minutes of the game and, and be in it and give yourself an opportunity to win. And if you're in the game in the last five minutes, you got a great chance to win. So it really – doesn't matter who we play that's kind of our motto anyway so I'd love to see us in the game in the full quarter I I think to like a UTSA who played BYU earlier and you know I think the score was like 21 to 13 you know at middle of the fourth and they had the ball with an opportunity to maybe go score and you know I'd We'd like to be in that same position, you know, and and make a game of it and and see if we can go win it. And, you know, we've been in a lot of big stadiums and played a lot of big opponents and have won some of those games. So I know I know that won't bother our kids. It's just a matter of, you know, going out there and executing. And BYU is a fantastic football team. So if we can get to the fourth quarter, that that would be huge for us. All right, Coach, last question. I'm going to move away from football for this one. I have been asking all of the guests on Cougar Pregame Live this question. Obviously, it's Halloween on Saturday. What is your go-to Halloween candy? We've all got something, and when we see it in the bag with our kids, if it's in there, we're probably going to eat it. What's that go-to candy for you? It's Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, no question about it. (laughs) You didn't even have to think about that. No, I I can eat those things all day long, man. (laughs) But, you know, that's like the the goal. That's the good stuff. When you were a kid, you know, you'd get all that rock hard candy and stuff. But then you went to the house that had the the Reese's and the the little Snickers and the Milky Ways and all that. And that's when you hit jackpot right there. So, Coach, enjoy your trip out here. Thank you so much for uh, taking a few minutes. I really do appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate it, Jason. There we go. That's Western Kentucky Hilltoppers head coach Tyson Elton. Appreciate him taking a few minutes. And if you're just tuning in and did not hear the information earlier, I asked coach a question about his quarterback situation where had two guys and whether we were going to know or when we would know uh, which would be the starting quarterback. We found out earlier in talking with the Hilltopper play-by-play guy that that Tyrell Pigram will be the starting quarterback. He's not 100% dealing with some turf toe. Uh, Thomas, the other quarterback, didn't even make the trip. So it will be Pigram starting tonight for Western Kentucky. All right, we come back, we'll wrap things up, get you ready for Greg Rubel, Riley Nelson, and the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. That's coming up right after this as Cougar Pregame Live rolls on, presented by Mountain America Credit Union on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to your host, Jason Shepard. Real quick traffic update to remind you about that will begin tonight at 9 p.m. Heavy delays northbound I-15 and Sandy between 114th South and 9400 South. As I mentioned, beginning at 9 p.m. tonight and running through Monday at 5 a.m., the freeway will be reduced to two lanes in that area. So again, between 114 114 South and 9400 South, so make sure you either avoid that or plan for extra time. If you're leading the game tonight, heading back to Salt Lake County, it's certainly something that you will encounter. All right, coming up next, it is Cougar Pre-Game Coaches Show with Greg Rubel and Kalani Satake. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to preview today's matchup with head coach Kalani Sataki. It's the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, presented by Zions Bank. For banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you. The Cougar Pregame Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Let's rejoin Riley Nelson and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening, Cougar football fans. Welcome once again inside Lavelle Edwards Stadium on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah, as tonight on Halloween night, the top 10 Cougars welcome Western Kentucky with BYU playing to go 7-0 
for only the fourth time in school history and the first time in 19 years. I'm your play-by-play commentator, Greg Grubel. With me is the sling and scrambling southpaw, the former BYU QB, Riley Nelson. And Riley, in this most unusual of seasons, where some teams' conference and conferences are just getting started or have even yet to play a game, BYU is already heading into its stretch run. After tonight, only three regular season games are scheduled. The first of the three is next week's game of the decade, potentially, at Boise State. But it will only be the game of the decade if BYU takes care of business tonight. And observers are not only watching to see if BYU wins, but how BYU wins tonight. And the Cougars are expected to dominate in games like this one. So already a pretty high bar has been set by Zach Wilson and these 6-0 and Cougs. Most definitely, and uh, you mentioned that uh, you mentioned Boise State. They took care of business, just wrapped up against Air Force, one at Air Force, so they're two and zero coming into that game, and hopefully BYU will be seven and zero. I expect them to be seven and zero. This Western Kentucky team comes in struggling mightily on offense. I think this BYU defense is looking for their first shutout, put up a zero on the scoreboard, and then I expect the offense to be more of the same, come out quick, efficient work. I expect Zach's numbers to continue to stay high and be bonkers and uh, should be fun here tonight. Last time BYU opened 7-0 and was also a season that was interrupted by crisis. The year was 2001, and BYU had a three-week break and rescheduled games in the aftermath of 9-11. Now in 2020, in a season played amidst a pandemic and with weekly schedule alterations, BYU once again seeking a 7-0 and start and the longest win streak of the Kalani Sitake era. We'll hear from uh, Kalani coming up next. This is the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show for banking that helps you game plan for life. Zions Bank is for you. Kalani's pregame interview next right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar pregame coaches show continues once again. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. We are live at Lavelle Edwards Stadium tonight. The 6-0 BYU Cougars home to the 2-4 Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. First ever meeting between these two programs. BYU coming in ranked 11th in the AP poll, 10th by the coaches, and generating some New Year's 6 buzz as quarterback Zach Wilson has played his way into the Heisman Trophy top five by most observers' estimations. BYU fans, this reminder that when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. With a BYU win tonight, pizza will be 50% off at papajohns.com using the online promo code BYU50, but that's on Monday only. Monday only. This offer is good at any Utah location. Speaking of reminders, for those with tickets to tonight's game here in Provo, masks are required in the venue. Please sit in your assigned seats. Please stay socially distanced, and no bags are allowed in the stadium. Exceptions are for medical reasons and for diaper bags. And one more reminder, expect heavy delays after the game tonight on northbound I-15 in Sandy between 114th South and 9400 South. The freeway will be reduced to two lanes beginning tonight at 9 p.m. and all the way through Monday morning at 5 a.m. And drivers are encouraged to avoid that area or plan extra travel time if they have to be in that area. Okay, six nights from tonight to BYU will be on the blue turf in Boise for what may be uh, a New Year's Six elimination game of sorts. It'll likely be a showdown of top 25 teams. Uh, Boise was ranked 25th coming into today and won their game today at Air Force. BYU's already in the top 15. Uh, really a massive game, but that game will only matter, truly matter, if tonight's outcome is optimal. The Cougars cannot slip up and should not, considering that Western Kentucky needed some late game dramatics to beat an FCS team just last weekend. But head coach at Kalani Sitake is all about how good the Cougars can be and says at Western Kentucky, uh, they'll be good in the end too. And he wants his guys to be focused regardless of opposition. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, looking into this year, it's a, it's a unique year because of the COVID. And I think when you're, when you're dealing with um, having to test a lot of people's depth and with the juggling injuries, I think you have to give them a little bit of, um, a little bit of leeway, you know, and, I think uh, Tyson Helton's a great coach. He knows how to get his guys ready to play. They've been banged up, and I'm pretty sure they have had to deal with a pandemic like every program has has ha- had to do. And so uh, we're expecting them to come in and establish a run game. Um, I think their quarterback will be healthy. Uh, they had to go with uh, with Kavars Thomas last couple games, and then um, uh, Piggy came in. I mean, that's that's his nickname. So I'm not, Tyrell Pigram. Yeah, yeah. Pigram. So yeah. The, the, he he came in and. 
led him to a, a game-winning drive, you know, at the end of the game. And so um, I think he, we expect to see him in the game. Uh, Maryland transfer, he could play, he could run. And so, you know, we, we've seen them win a lot of games last year, and uh, this is a team that's used to winning, so we know that they're going to come in there and, and want to upset us. We've heard their coach talk about that often. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, we're going to have to be ready and make sure that our guys are, are, are ready for to answer the, the, the challenge that they're going to bring. Between Tyson and brother Clay and the dad Kim, how about that uh, Helton coaching family? Huh? Yeah, and I, I've got to know them really well. I've been around Clay often and, and, and got to hang out with his, with his dad Kim. And um, it's all ball with that family, you know, and, and, and really impressed with how they carry themselves and uh, just, just, the, just how friendly they are when talking about football. And so uh, I, I've got to meet and, and, and hang out with Tyson often as well. And, uh, they're they're going to be fine. They're, I think they're they're going to be well coached as a team, and they're going to bring a, a lot of experience in the coaching staff. And so, uh, we have to be ready. I, I've been really pleased with our preparation. We just got to finish the deal and play the game. Part of your preparation has been getting a couple of key parts of your offense back on the field this week, and that's in uh, James Empey and Gunnar Romney, who both had to miss last week. Yeah, really looking forward to those guys getting back on the field. And and I mean, I think Gunnar's uh, feeling a little pressure because Dax is starting to separate himself <laughs> a little bit more of the stats, and so. Gunner wants to get get some catches and and help our team out, and he he just loves playing the game of football. So uh, I think his his uh, recovery has gone really well, and looking forward to see him and and James on the field making plays for us. Gunner's five yards away from a thousand career receiving yards, and Dax is seven yards away from a thousand career receiving yards. Does the first guy to one thousand get anything special? I don't know, but they better both hit well over a thousand this you know this <laughs> game and. Uh, just I, I I just really really happy with the way that they work together and I've always I can always judge how much a receiver is bought in by the way they block when the mm-hmm. when they don't have the ball in their hands when they're not the primary receiver and if you watch those guys run their routes even though they know they're not the first look it's amazing and and, and what a great example they are to the rest of the guys in that receiving core and even to the tight ends. And it, it, it helps motivate everyone to do their job. Whether it's Gunner sitting out a game or James being out a few games or Tristan having to miss or, or Matt before the season, how pleased are you with how every unit has responded behind those guys to keep the performance at a high level? Really happy about it. And I give, it, I, I give the, uh, the response um, a lot of credit to their coach. You know, the position coaches have done an amazing job getting their teams ready and then the leadership on our team. and and the upperclassmen, but also just everyone. It, leaders don't aren't able to do their job if people aren't willing to follow. And so there's a really good culture in this team, a good belief in, in each other, and, the, and they love each other, and they love what, they, what they're doing and what they get to represent. And so I'm just hoping we can do it again and, and keep this thing rolling. How's your defense shaping up this week? Good. I really feel good about the, the, the front, and um, obviously if we have the big man Kyrus up front, and uh, I think that makes a difference for us. Uh, we have the ability to do a lot of different looks and a lot of different disguises and bring a lot of different things to the scheme. And for, so for us, it's just been assignment sound. I, I want to make sure we play great fundamental defense, meaning tackling well, shedding blocks, and then making sure that we're playing assignment sound football. We do that and focus on our technique. I think we'll, we'll have a good performance from our defense. Of teams that have played at least six games, uh, no team has allowed fewer rushing touchdowns than BYU right now. You guys are very tough inside 20, inside 10, near the goal line. Yeah, and it's the awareness of our team and the awareness of the, of the defensive front. The fact that our team is playing uh, uh, in all three phases cohesive uh, football, and uh, they're, they're all tied together, you know. So our, our defense appreciates our offense, and, and they, they can't do their job if the offense isn't scoring points. And so uh, when, they're, when they feel like there's pressure and they need to get there, I think being able to make teams have to throw the ball uh, should be working our benefit to get in the end zone, you know. And um, I, I think we've had some weird plays where tip balls goes for touchdowns and things like that. And we just have to just keep answering. And these guys have been, their mindset has been really focused. And, and regardless whether it's something positive or negative, I've, I've been able to get them uh, focused on what what the next thing, you know, the next play, the next series, and things like that. We may not talk a lot about your special teams, but you really can't take for granted the value of a punter who can help with field position, place kicker who makes all of his kicks. Exactly, and, and Ed Lamb's done an amazing job in coordinating that, that team and working with you know our our, uh, our graduate assistant, Gavin Fowler. They, they've done an amazing job um, getting the special teams set. 
They've been able to work with our coaches and, and the phases that they're in charge of. And then the players just are all bought in into our special teams. And, and you can see that it, it goes in line with how our team's been playing uh, just team football all together. And, and the energy, the excitement, the, you know, the courage that our guys take on kickoff get downfield. It's, 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 it's a fun sight to see and uh, hopefully we keep this thing rolling. I, like I said, we have great kickers and, and, and uh, I think we have one of the best punters in the country and one of the best place kickers in the country and uh, they, they couldn't do that if it weren't for the snappers and, and the guys that are protecting for them. So uh, it all works out. We just, uh, I'd be okay if we just don't let the punter keep <laughs> punting and, and if we keep kicking PATs instead of field goals, I'll feel good about it. It's your last scheduled home game for a while, but you'll have a few more fans in the stands than even last week and hopefully get a nice send-off. Yeah, just excited to see them in there, and, and that was a lot of fun last week, you know, and it's a late-night kickoff, so we're excited to see everyone tonight and just let's go have some fun and, 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 and enjoy uh, the opportunity that we have to play this game of football and um, just having a lot of, uh, uh, just enjoying the whole moment and that includes being around the fans and, and getting their energy. All right, Kalani, always good to have these pregame conversations. Have a great game, and we'll talk to you afterward. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Let's go. That is BYU head coach Kalani Sitake leading us into the Homey home field advantage. Brought to you by Homey, who reminds you that there's no place like home playing in front of Cougar fans who have your back. Homey's got your back, saving you sweet cash. When buying or selling a home, call it your Homey home field advantage. And tonight... BYU seeks to extend its longest home win streak of the Kalani Sitake era. Seven games and counting coming into tonight. Uh, BYU's last eight-game home win streak came during the 2014 and 2015 seasons. This has been the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show. For banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you. This is BYU football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Kickoff is just around the corner. You're tuned to the BYU Store Cougar Kickoff Show. The BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The Cougar Kickoff Show is also brought to you by Bailey's Moving. We move with you every step of the way since 1952. BYU Dining, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. And by Utah Community Credit Union. Get more house, same payment at UCCU. It's what we do. Let's head live to the Mo Betta's broadcast booth. Alongside Riley Nelson, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Let us take a brief 10-second pause for stations to identify themselves on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You're listening to BYU Football on BYU Radio. Hello, good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside Lavelle Edwards Stadium on the Brigham Young University campus in Provo, Utah. Tonight, BYU plays a Halloween game for the first time in 28 years. The 6-0 Cougs, home of the 2-4 Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky, WKU out of Conference USA, third of three Conference USA teams to take on BYU this season. This is the Cougar Kickoff Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Greg Grubel, Riley Nelson with you. As your broadcast tandem in the booth, we are joined upstairs by engineer Michael Wimmer, statistician Ralph Sokolowski, spotter Andrew Gray, former BYU wide receiver Mitchell Jurgens, reports for us from field level and in the Zions Bank end zone for banking that helps you game plan for life. Zions Bank is for you, our team in the BYU radio studios, comprised of your host Jason Shepard, engineers Barry Squires and Sean Faye, coordinating producer Terry South, control board operator Liam Howard, and broadcast intern Bryce Larson. Good to have you with us on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Well, BYU tonight uh, capping a six games in six weeks stretch that will be followed by only three games over the ensuing Six weeks, at least that's the current schedule, including one FCS game, by the way. Uh, the two FBS games on the road at Boise State and home to San Diego State, two teams good enough to help BYU's schedule strength, but the question becomes, would BYU benefit from, say, one more game on one of its three open dates after the Boise State game? There's an element of risk-reward in considering an 11th game because the speculation is that a 10-0 BYU team would be New Year's Six worthy, but after Boise State... BYU will be more or less idle for a month while the rest of the college football world is playing meaningful games. Riley, it'll be intriguing to see 
if there's still another schedule surprise in BYU's future and what that might mean for BYU's postseason hopes. I sure hope so. I sure hope there's another game, and I uh, have all the confidence and faith in the world that Tom Homo's on it. I, I want it for the resume. I think we'd all like to see it for the resume. Another reason, Greg, is I think uh, if I was a player, I'd love to stay sharp. Chances are you're being projected into a big-time bowl game against a big-time opponent, and you can't go by the time bowl season rolls around. You talked about one month. It's going to be two, maybe even two and a half months before uh, you actually get to play football again. So you want a game in there to help sharpen your skills. And then lastly, selfishly, I mean, every opportunity we get to see this game, or to see this team play has been a treat. And so why not? Let's get one more, an 11th game in there. More of the BYU Store. Cougar kickoff show is straight ahead after we tell you that this season, BYU football and Mountain America Credit Union are changing lives. For each field goal BYU makes, Mountain America will donate $250 to the American Red Cross to help fund humanitarian services and programs. Our pregame look at BYU and Western Kentucky continues right after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar Kickoff Show continues. Let's head back to the Mo Betta's broadcast booth with Riley Nelson and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Tonight here in Provo, 10th and 11th ranked BYU, home to Western Kentucky. BYU, one of the highest scoring teams in the FBS. At 45 points per game, the Hilltoppers, one of the lowest scoring squads. At fewer than 18 points per game for the second straight week and third time in four weeks, BYU is more than a four-touchdown favorite. The Cougars are rolling right now. The offense gets a lot of well-deserved attention, but uh, the BYU D has been more than doing its part for this 6-0 top-10 team. The Cougs allowing only 14 points a game, top 15 in scoring defense and total defense, top 10 in third down defense, and all season long on occasions when the offense leaves the defense in a bad position on the field by virtue of a turnover, whether on downs or otherwise. The D's been dominant. BYU's yet to allow a single point on possessions after any of the Cougars' five offensive turnovers. Riley, the defensive group we're seeing really seems to relish the opportunity to flex a bit when they're backed up in a tough spot. Boy, do they ever. And by the way, that doesn't mean, like, not all those giveaways have happened 80 yards away from the goal line. Some of them have been inside the red zone. There's two, at least, that I can think of. So that really is a stat that speaks to the true team unity of of this BYU team but here's one thing that I'm looking for on this defense tonight there's been a couple times second units come in giving up points when the shutout was an opportunity I think this entire unit you know first through third string on the depth chart is looking for that shutout tonight and uh, it's eluded them thus far this season I think it would be a great uh, point on the resume and something that this team is looking for Time now for tonight's Hyatt Place Comfort Zone feature at Hyatt Place Provo your safety and comfort will always be our highest priority. And BYU is currently very comfortable throwing the ball to Dax Mill. He leads the Cougars in targets, receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Of 38 catchable balls, he's caught 37. He can run the ball on fly sweep. He can be a screen guy. He can be a deep guy. He gets yak yards. He can really do it all. And with his first or second catch tonight, he'll go over 1,000 receiving yards for his career. Dax Milne making a remarkable leap from sophomore to junior season and a progression from walk-on to go-to guy has been very, very impressive. We're back with more of the BYU Store Cougar Kickoff Show right after this on the new skin BYU Sports Network getting you geared up for game time this is the Cougar kickoff show now back to Riley Nelson and the voice of the Cougars Greg Rubel BYU and WKU coming up 20 past the hour. It's the Hilltoppers' first ever game in the state of Utah. Longest trip west since the Hilltoppers joined the FBS. So the Toppers coming in 2-4 and four had to pull off one uh, a late one against FCS foe Chattanooga last Saturday. They're coming off a 9-4 and four year last year, but they already have as many losses as all of last year. BYU, meantime, putting up eye-popping numbers for the first time in school history. The Cougs have scored 40 or more five times in their first six games. That number surprised me, but this this is truly the first team ever to do that here at BYU. That includes last week's 52-14 to home decision over Texas State. And Riley, it was yet another game in which the starters 
got to watch most of the second half from the sidelines. And although you might sacrifice a little sharpness late in some games, there's a net benefit in development of depth and then a protection of health, particularly in the offensive backfield where the quarterback and running backs have been every game guys so far. And despite a missed game by Gunnar Romney uh, last time out, the main offensive weapons have looked fresh, they've looked energetic, and the comfortable wins against a non-P5 programs are a part of that right now. Most definitely, and you'll you'll going into the biggest game of the season on a short week uh, to get those couple quarters in and then get your guys starting to rest and recover is, I think, something that you will welcome as long as those first couple quarters are sharp, which it has been for this first unit every game thus far this season. Coming up, we'll head down to field level and hear from Mitchell Jurgens as the BYU Store Cougar Kickoff Show continues live from Lavelle Edwards Stadium on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Kickoff Show. Let's get back to Riley Nelson and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU and Western Kentucky coming up here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium where BYU tonight seeks a seventh straight win overall, an eighth consecutive win at home. And the Cougars are playing to set up next week's big battle at Boise State, a game BYU needs to win to put another stamp on its New Year's Six passport. But, of course, the Cougs' planned postseason itinerary is first contingent upon a win over a heavy underdog, WKU, here tonight. Seems that every week over the last few weeks, Zach Wilson's either uh, moving up or moving atop another all-time stat category, and BYU's junior starting quarterback is on the cusp of another milestone. He's attempted his last 157 passes without throwing an interception. The record's 164 here at BYU, and uh, Riley Nelson, Zach has not built this streak he's got going on a series of uh, checkdowns and dump-offs. No, everywhere you turn, you look, and he's among the nation, le- the national leaders of attempts and complete, I mean, 20 yards, 40 yards, whatever that, that yardage you want to require as far as... It, pushing the ball down the field he is taking those shots and he's completing those shots most people will think that that has to do with accuracy and zach has been deadly sniper like accurate this season but to me that more speaks to the way he's developed the mental part of the game because he's just not making mental mistakes and putting himself in precarious situations and uh, I, i would not be surprised against this western kentucky defense that he surpasses that and more Well, BYU uh, has given Zach Wilson some good guys to throw to uh, this year. And one of those guys is Gunnar Romney. He's projected as a starter tonight after missing the Texas State game while nursing an injury. But in his place, uh, Dax Milne has more than adequately picked up the slack without Gunnar latter part of the Houston game and then last week. We've already talked a bit about Dax, but uh, Mitchell Juergen's down at the field. We're bringing in Mitchell now from the Zions Bank end zone for banking that helps you game plan for life. Zions Bank is for you. Mitch, as a former walk-on at BYU who went on to earn a scholarship, talking about you now, I'm sure you have a special appreciation for what Dax is doing because he did the same thing basically right here. Yeah, Greg. Uh, honestly, Dax Milne has become my favorite player to watch for a number of reasons, right? The the, the output that he's been um, displaying for BYU Cougars in this season has just been nothing short of remarkable. Um, but yes, coming from, I mean, he had a hard road to get here. It was a walk-on. Um, any walk-on coming in, there's a you've got to put forth more effort, more you've got to do more things right to get no is to get in a position to contribute and Dax has capitalized on every single one of those moments um, I, I saw a stat recently that showed who is the best receivers in the nation when it comes to one-on-one coverage and Dax was the second best wide receiver in, NC, in, in the NCAA right now in one-on-one coverage so it just goes to show you you don't just do that you know overnight and become that kind of that type of player that can produce at such a high level he's worked so hard for everything he's gotten and and, uh, I mean, I'm just so incredibly proud for the things that he's doing and the contributions he's making for this team. Zach is clearly, they have such an incredible friendship, um, and, and the chemistry is undeniable when those two are together on the field. Great stuff from you, Mitch. Thank you. Coming up next, Riley Nelson's keys to tonight's game, the coin toss and the opening kick. This has been the Cougar kickoff show brought to you by the BYU Store. We're live from Lavelle Edwards Stadium on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. <laughs> 